Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. To the fear you can hear. Tonight, I hope you have strong stomachs. For we're bound on a Caribbean cruise. Oh, we don't expect rough sailing on the way. So if you are easily seasick, have no fears. Save them all for your landing on the twin island of Mauritius and Sandorin. For it is the home of voodoo and the living dead. The soulless legions of men who are called zombies. That's it, compadres. That's the coffin we seek. Scrap away the earth so we can get the lid open. Soon we can steal another corpse for the witch doctor. That's it. Now break open the lid. And swing it back. My way now. Shine the light. Oh, must have been strong as an ox. He'll make a fine zombie brother for El Generalissimo's elite guard. Está bien. Señor Ongan. Here is another carcass for your living dead. <laughs> mystery drama, The Walking Corpse, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Big taste in the morning, Kellogg's, Kellogg's, and that wholesome taste to get you up and grinning. This is Jerry Coffer for Kellogg's Special K. We've been having some fun in our television and radio commercials by using a ball and chain to symbolize the slight overweight problem common to so many of us. We point out that being a few pounds overweight is just a little more difficult for you. Climbing stairs, just walking around, even sitting down can feel, well, like you're wearing a ball and chain. In case you missed the message, it's this. If you really want to get rid of that extra weight, you really have to work at it by exercising and with sensible meals like the Special K breakfast. A one-ounce bowl of Special K, America's favorite high-protein cereal, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, and coffee, less than 240 calories, nutritious, and by the way, delicious. So why not begin each day with a Special K breakfast and then keep up the good work? Special K can't help you lose weight all by itself, but it really is a good start. Hey, ma'am, what's for dinner? Hey, ma'am, what you got? What's for dinner? Your ShopRite is featuring ShopRite or Shenandoah brand grade A rock Cornish hens, a real family treat at just 47 cents a pound. What's for breakfast? Listen to these ShopRite values. ShopRite grade A large eggs, 59 cents a dozen. ShopRite sliced bacon, one pound package, 79 cents. ShopRite grade double A butter, one pound brick, 69 cents. Crown top white bread, 22 ounce loaves, three for a dollar. Save on every meal at ShopRite. The body of a dead person, given the semblance of life, usually for some evil purpose, that is a zombie. The very name itself is calculated to make the flesh creep and the blood run chill. But on a plane headed for Miami, taking them to their honeymoon, nothing could be further from the thoughts of Steve Ramsey and his new wife, Pat. Oh, I can't believe I have you to myself for these few hours, Steve, let alone a glorious two weeks. <laughs> I don't know what the other associate professors go through, but my first two and a half years teaching parapsychology have laid me out. I can't wait for those hot sands and warm water. Mm. 
Can I serve you a drink, sir? Oh, now that's what I call perfect timing. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> One more, and I can fly solo to Miami without the play. Well, then I'll join you. I can't have you orbiting alone. <laughs> <laughs> May I get by, please, daughters? I'm sorry, sir. Just let me move the cart. Oh, thank you. Chris! It is Christopher. Shh. It's all right, Stewardess. I'll uh, join my friend here for a moment. <laughs> hey, Steve, man. Good to see you. Here, here, here. I'll move over. Sit down. Chris, you look something else. It's great to run into you. Only just for a moment there, I thought you were thinking of giving me the brush. You? Yeah, never. Uh, I'll explain in a minute. Oh, Pat, uh, this is Christopher LeClaire. I want to... Well, I want you to meet my brand new bride. Hmm. Oh, this is a pleasure, Mrs. Ramsey. Let me congratulate you on your impeccable taste, Steve. <laughs> and both of you on your marriage. I'd uh, like to buy some champagne, but uh, you already have your drinks. No, no more champagne, thank you. We've had enough in the last few weeks to float a battleship. <laughs> At least uh, let me get a drink for myself to toast the bride and groom. He's your old football buddy, right? Yeah. Greatest running back I ever saw. All-around athlete. He could have made it big in the pros. Any sport. Isn't he a prince or something? And his father is the king of Mawisha. I wonder what's bugging him. Well, ah, this is better. A toast from my country. To be a good man is first to have a good wife. Abusantes. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. And to yours. <laughs> yours, too. Oh, yes. Uh, drink to my good health, please. What is it, Chris? You want to talk about it? I wish I still had you calling the place for me, but... Uh... This is a different ball game. You know about my father? No. What? He's dead. Oh. Oh, no. What can I say? Hang in there, man. Oh, I will be tough, all right. Was it, uh, was it recent? The day before yesterday. I didn't see anything about it in the papers. It wasn't in the papers. He didn't die. He was assassinated. Oh, no. Any idea who did it? There is no proof, but I know. Who? Oh. Oh, maybe not by his own hand, but at least on his orders. Hernando Trujedo. The generalissimo? But I thought he was your father's best friend. And my godfather. His gift to me on my 21st birthday. His own good luck charm. The bracelet of the sacred serpent. The head, the voodoo symbol of life. The tail, the symbol of death. You see, they are woven together. But, but then why should he... Because, Mrs. Ramsey, my father gave our people freedom. A freedom the San Dorindian cannot share. Why not? <laughs> because if they had it, they would tear the man who rules them by terror to pieces. So he's planning to move in on Mauritius and an exit. The moment my father's assassination is revealed... A coup d'etat while the people are in confusion with no leadership. That's why I've given up any dream of becoming a doctor and am going home. A private plane will meet me in Miami to fly me to Moesha. To save time, I took this commercial flight under an assumed name. You think Trujillo might... I was warned just in time. Less than an hour after I left my apartment, a bomb gutted it. I am a dangerous man to know these days. So, before I do cause any... Oh, my God! Steve, what is it? Two hoods with machine guns. It looks like a sky... Senores and oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. May I have your attention, please? That's Juan Garcia, Trujillo's hatchet man. Oh. What can we do? Nothing. It's me Everyone quiet. If you do as I say... No one will be hurt. We are commandeering this plane. Quiet! Quiet! There is nothing for any of you to fear. The plane will land at Miami, and all passengers will be discharged, except for the flight crew and four hostages. I repeat, there is no cause for alarm if all of you keep your seats and your heads. Hold still, everybody. Just follow orders. Anyone who doesn't will be shot. Okay. All right. You three, 
up. Find it to first class. Look, Garcia. No names. And no wrong moves. My orders are to bring you dead or alive. I was only going to ask that my friends... Your friends can identify you. We don't want that for a few days. They will only be held as hostage till we are ready. If they do as they are told, they will be released unharmed. Now move. Join the other hostages you were sitting with in first class. Steve, I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. You okay, Patricia? Ready, unwilling, but able. That's my gal. Let's go. Just walk ahead of me, nice and steady. Muy bien, mis amigos. Zanka, Roban. Oh. Nobody moves till I come back. Okay. Inside. That's it. Go sit by him. Kito, don't let them move till I come back. I'm uh, sorry I got you into this. Yeah, we'll make out. Are you okay, honey? Well, a few butterflies in the stomach. Uh, yeah, uh, <gasps> what does he want? To move in and sit down, I think. Better keep him happy. He's a surly character at best. Why don't we sit in these four together? Our friend's a little deaf. If we keep far enough away, we can talk safely. If we keep our voices down. Why are you being held hostage? Any number of reasons. I'm U.S. government. I know who you are. They took a dim view of me for carrying a gun, and they have a pretty good idea of who I am, too. Well, who are you? Hawkins will do. Bill Hawkins. What branch of the government? Well, I think I won't reveal that. I was assigned to see that you cleared the country safely, Your Highness. Someone slipped me a knockout drop in the coffee. That's when I lost consciousness and my gun. You were asleep when I came back. Oh, uh, this is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Steve Ramsey. I meet you, Steve, ma'am. Yeah, hi, Hawkins. How do you do, Mr. Hawkins? Any idea what their plans are? Refuel, clear the rest of the passengers out. Then... Then we head straight for San Dorinde. That's the notion. So the moment they get our friend Christophe here to San Dorinde, he's a gone goose. He'll just drop out of sight suddenly and for good. Now, my guess is they'll set up one of these goons as a fall guy, have a big show trial, and in the meanwhile, return the plane with us aboard. Only somewhere on the way, we'll all disappear in a puff of plastic bomb smoke. We're just as long gone as the king here. What's the alternative? Distract Ugly there long enough for one of us to disarm him. Garcia and his other boys can only get at us through the narrow passageway between tourist class and here. I can keep them pinned down till you get out the emergency exit. He's a big guy. Better let me... Okay, no time to argue. Now, how do we distract him? That's my job. Pat, please stay out of this. I'm in it just as much as all of you. Watch this. Hey, mister, come here a second. Okay, then, I'll come to you. Take it easy. I just want to ask something. Well, if you can't hear me, I, I can't speak any louder. Oh, please, come closer. That's it. I, I, I just want to ask where the Ow. ladies... Oh. Ah. Watch it, he's strong as a bull. Ah. God, he's broken my arm. It's all right. I have begun. Stay where you are. Ah. Don't let him near you. Ah. I'll shoot. What are you ah. waiting for? All right, Kilo. Bring up your gun. Chris! You shot him, Garcia. You killed him. <laughs> they talk him dead or alive. It makes no difference. But that other man. Chris shot him twice. Point blank. It should have killed him. Kito? <laughs> oh, no. Don't you know you can kill a zombie? <laughs> into the landing now. How's Chris? He's alive, but just barely. If he can just hang on, maybe when we land, a doctor can help Too him. late. Too late for me. Don't give up, Chris. Take... Take... Snake. What? The snake bracelet. He wants you to... Here. There. Steve has it, Chris. Good. Listen. You go down Solange. She hide you. Save you. Give her bracelet. But where do we find her? Où est votre tante? Quelle rue? Quelle place? Pense her. 
A venite. A venite. De las muñecas. Avenue of the dolls. Yes, what number? Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, gray serpent. Take me home. Take me home. Don't say lush. Don't say lush. Help. This sign. Sign of the black. Black book. Book. We're about to land. Pretty short runway. Better fasten your seatbelts. I'll get yours for you. Not the most promising way to begin a honeymoon, particularly when it seems there is more than a little chance of ending it, even before it's begun. Who knows what kind of reception is ahead for the newlyweds? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Oh, sure. You can talk about good-tasting diet drinks, but I know. I'm Goldilocks, and here at my taste-testing laboratory, I taste-test them all. And nobody's been drinking my diet drinks until I tested sugar-free Diet 7-Up. And then, kablooey! Every bear wanted some. Diet 7-Up is fresh, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up. This one's just right. There's a very special deal going on at all offices of Suburban Savings throughout North Jersey. It's called Suburban Special Interest Deal. And you'll be especially interested in these savings you get. A top 7.90% effective annual yield on Suburban's limited issue 7.50% savings certificate. And Suburban guarantees it from 4 to 10 years, minimum deposit $2,500. Early withdrawal prior to maturity is subject to a substantial penalty. Suburban compounds interest continuously from day of deposit paid quarterly. So you not only get interest on your savings, you get interest on the interest. And Suburban offers you the highest interest rate allowed by law. Here's your chance to get a great savings. A top 7.90% effective annual yield on Suburban's limited issue 7.50% savings certificate. Why not deal yourself into Suburban Savings Special Interest Deal in Bayonne, Edgewater, Elmwood Park, Emerson, Hackettstown, Morris Plains, Nutley, Paramus, and Sparta. There is no mystery about the morning when you come rambling with gambling. Good evening, evening mystery fans. Uh, this is John Gambling, and every morning, Monday through Saturday, here at WOR from 5 a.m. till 10, we get the crew together to try to uh, put the morning together for you, to tell you what the weather's going to be like, whether there's heavy traffic coming into the city, whether the subways and the commuter trains are running. Bob Harris is in WOR's weather center every morning with all that very complicated equipment that he has to help prognosticate the day. Day's weather. Uh, we cover sports completely with Don Crickey. In the news department, Peter Roberts, Henry Gladstone, and Harry Hennessy. And up in the helicopter, George Meade or Fred Feldman, keeping an eye on the traffic scene. So all together, we do try to take any mystery out of the morning. And just to brighten up the beginning of your day a little bit, I think we have some kind of nice, listenable, and tuneful music. So tune in tomorrow morning or any morning for Rambling with Gambling. Now, back to the mystery. Under other circumstances, Pat and Steve would have no complaints about their accommodations on the island. Drained and exhausted, the silk-sheeted bed in an expensive suite is an alluring invitation to sleep. Except, even if you are dead to the world, who wants to become part of the world of the dead? Oh, Steve. Is it possible... Could there really be such a thing as a, a zombie? No, of course not. It's just a superstition. But you saw Chris fire two bullets right into his body. Yes. And he didn't even flinch. Cogito ergo sum. What? I think. Therefore, I am. Uh, Pat, look. Under any other circumstances, I'd be fascinated. But, I mean, this is my field. And you do believe that there are walking dead. Do you... 
Do I believe that a man can be exhumed from the grave and life breathed back into his corpse? No. No, I can't accept that. That's beyond my credulity. But I've seen things in parapsychological experiments and in psychic research that... Honey, the power of supernatural belief is beyond belief. The right subject, particularly one of low mentality, under hypnosis, is capable of incredible feats. Superhuman strength, no sensation of pain, no shock reaction. Oh, Lord. Now what? The knock wasn't at the door we came in. It's that one over there. Oh, wait a minute. Stay where you are, Pat. Yes? Who is it? Bill Hawkins. I'm in an adjoining room. Is there a bolt on your side? Yeah. Half a sec. Hi, Bill. Listen, we've got to talk. What's the sense in talking? Hello, Pat. Hello, Bill. How's your arm? Feels fine. They did a real good job of patching it up. I just wondered before we all turned in if you had a radio in here. There's one right over there. Good. Mind if I turn it on and see if I can catch some news? Uh-oh. Only one band. Well, let's see what it's got. Hey, I see they provided you with a meal, too. I never even noticed. Pretty good grub. You should try it. I wouldn't touch it. Nor I. Look, I don't see how well... All right, we can cut the comedy now. This place is bugged. The radio ought to block us out. Now, we've got to plan some kind of escape. How? I may have that lined up. It's where to hole out after we bust from here that's got me stumped. I've got a possible answer to that. What? Saint Solange. Who? Chris's aunt. She lives here. Where? The Avenue of the Dolls. It's a long, winding street. Any idea where? You know it? Oh, I spent six months on Secret Service here before we closed down our embassy. Did he give you a cross street, a number? He was pretty incoherent before he died. When I asked him, he just sort of rambled on about the great serpent and the, the black bull or the, something. The serpent is the basic symbol of the voodoo religion. Black bull I never heard of in this liturgy. Wait a minute. The chicken in the ob obia coat is a sacrificial animal considered to... Maybe it was the black pull. He was trying to say black pullet. Does that mean anything to you, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. It's a uh, sort of a uh, souvenir shop. You know, a typical tourist trap with straw hats and dolls and voodoo drums, you name it. Yeah, well, could you find it? Sure, it's not far from here. But how do we get out first? You got slacks on. Good. You got a dark scarf to cover that blonde hair? Right here. All right, come with me. Walk soft. Keep your voices low. Turn up that radio a little. Roger. Even open. I'm over here to my window. Now keep off to the sides. Now look down. There's one of those... those zombies down there. But you see, there's a balcony and steps that lead to the street. Yeah, with a... something subhuman, or maybe I should say superhuman, armed with a gun right at the bottom of them. If he's cold cocked, it isn't going to do him any good. Bill, you have a lot of guts, but you're no Muhammad Ali, and the only strength I have is in my brain. Hold out your hands. I'm going to give you the equalizers. Steve, with his fist wrapped around a roll of nickels or quarters, a 13-year-old boy could deck Joe Frazier, given the chance to blindside him. Yeah, but we haven't got... Keep your hands out. Now, this is a salt cellar. Same difference. I'm spilling the salt into your left hand. Wrap the other around this heavy crystal. I'm doing the same with the pepper. Now, you, Pat... Oh, I wouldn't know You're going to... to cover us by making a diversion. Pick up that glass water pitcher there. Too heavy for you to throw? No. I'll throw where? We turn off the lights, turn off the radio, make like we're turning in. Then we sneak out the French windows onto the balcony. You go off to the right, opposite end from the steps. When that zombie reacts to the crash of that pitcher on the flagstones on your side, Steve and I go down the steps and take him out. Then we go look for Tom Solange. No, but he'd see you. Of course. So we wait until dark. And that won't be long now. Now! You take him, Steve. Oh, he's still not out. I'm throwing the pepper. Throw the salt in his eyes. There you are. Watch it. I think I... 
I think I killed him. Well, don't stop to find out. The light's going on. Come on, Pat. We'll have to run for it. (laughs) Hold it. We'll have to chance the light. Which which way? Ahead. To the right. Go to the next block. They're right on our heels. Give me that flashlight and you get out of here, both of you. What about you? Don't be a fool. Somebody's got to be a decoy. You have a wife to think of. Now hurry. Come on, Pat. Run. Go to the left. They went to the left. Follow that light. Yes? Town to Solange. Who won't, sir? I am Christopher's friend with my wife. We are running from Tujedo, the Generalissimo. Christopher told me to seek refuge here and to bring you this. <gasps> the great serpent. A moment. Enter, my children. Quickly, quickly. So, turn out your lights also. We must hide like cats in the dark. <laughs> Killed little Christophe. First my brother, then his son. Well, he will be made to pay. An eye for an eye, a heart for a bleeding heart. Now shall the tyrant bleed. Now at last my curse shall enter his vitals. Now will the great serpent uncoil and strike Hernando Trejedo dead. Oh, it wasn't the Generalissimo who shot Chris. It was a man named Garcia. Garcia! That jackal puppet dangled by the strings. That less than nothing with no mind or will of his own. Is he a zombie too? What do you know of zombies, my child? Nothing. Except what I saw on the plane and what my husband tried to tell me. Oh, you are a teacher in college, Monsieur Ramsey, no? Yes, and much of my studies are in the, in the supernatural. You believe in zombie? Well, no, not altogether. Very well. We shall put our beliefs to the test. It's a doll. Like the ones you sell in the store here. Not quite the same. This one is like the souvenirs of El Generalissimo. With this difference. I have been a long time making him. You see, the straw is from his favorite horse's stall. The beard is made from the combings of his hairbrush. The eyes, J-chips from a dress coat button. The boots from the fingers of an old glove. This is a voodoo doll. All of him is made with things that once belonged to Trujedo. Only one last thing I needed to make the spell work. The weapon... Now, at last, I have in my hand the instrument of destruction. I straighten out the circle, turn the head to the sky, and death the tail towards the ground and strike. What have I done, Mr. Ramsey? You you drove the bracelet like a knife straight through the doll's head. From temple to temple, Hernando Trejedo will be dead by midnight, and we will all be free. (laughs) You still do not believe. Let us find how strong your science holds against my faith. What's that? Trejedo's men. The doll. They must not find the doll. Help me pin it under my skirt. Oh, my hands are shaking so much. Oh, just in time. So, we meet again, Senor Ramsey. How did you find us? Your friend Hawkins. He gave us away? Senor Ramsey, every man will give anything away with the right persuasion. Senor Hawkins took longer than most. He was very foolish. What do you mean? Since in the end he told, why was it worth dying for? Vamos, we must not keep the Canaralisimo waiting. (laughs) 
please, let me assure you that you have nothing to worry about. I ask you all to relax. Now, the tavern is set for a late supper. I am sure you must all be famished after a long and difficult day. Won't you be my guests? Mm, prisoners, you mean? For oh, Hedo. Ah, yes. La bonne princesse Solange, I am honored. I had no idea you had come to live among us. I have been here longer than you know. Ah, yes, I must speak to my secret police about that. <laughs> had I been told you were honoring our country with a visit, I would have arranged a more suitable welcome. I am sure you would. By disposing of me as you did my brother and my nephew, Christophe. <sighs> I suppose it would be impossible for me to convince you that I had no hand in the death of King Francois. The sad truth is that his heart failed him. His death was a natural one. Lie upon lie. But one truth you cannot twist. The death of my nephew. Did you see him die? There are two witnesses before your desk who did. Ah. Uh, excuse me a moment. Garcia, are you ready? Si, now. We must wait for a moment. Uh, for what? You will see. Senora Ramsey, let me ask you a question. What? Did you see Christophe Leclerc die? Yes. Aren't you, senor? Yes. You are quite sure. Of course. Yes. Look, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> Not I. I will let him show you that for himself. You see? Chris. Monsieur Baby. Steve. He's alive. It's Chris. Chris. Is it really you? Sure, man. Sure. Don't you know me? There is no mistaking the tall, lithe figure, the regal bearing, the proud, handsome face. All those belong to Christophe Leclerc. He might easily have remarked, as Mark Twain once telegraphed, the reports of my death are an exaggeration. We'll return shortly with Act Three. Some research experts say you can't taste the difference between beers. Well, if they're right, then Anheuser-Busch wastes a barrel of time Beechwood aging Budweiser. Only they don't think so. Brewing beer right does make a difference. And they're betting a bundle that you can taste the difference in Bud. When it comes to brewing Budweiser, the Anheuser-Busch choice is to go all the way because they still care about quality. this way. If the Bud people have a choice between what some experts say and what beer drinkers say, well, you'd better believe they'll go with you beer drinkers every time. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Tomorrow, Monday at Abraham and Strauss, huge savings on Broadloom and on Broadloom remnant rugs. From one of America's top carpet mills, A&S snapped up a very special purchase of Mill Trial Velvet Broadloom. The tiny imperfections certainly won't affect wear, and you'll pay just $8.99 completely installed with deluxe padding. $8.99 a square yard for lush all-nylon pile Velvet Broadloom. If perfect, the price would be $14.99, so you save $6 on every square yard. Save on other fried fine broadlooms, too, like a fabulous all-wool pile gold shag broadloom, reduced from $21.95 to just $11.99 a square yard installed. Plus a huge A&S sale of room size remnant rugs, all at one single sellout price, $69. Take your pick of a tremendous assortment of nylon pile rugs in room sizes up to 12 by 14 feet. Originally $99 to $119. Tomorrow, your choice, $69. Tomorrow, Monday, at your nearest A&S store except Garden City. Come early.
At the shock of the reincarnation of a dead man appearing from the grave, it is not surprising that his friends and relatives are literally frozen in their tracks. Under the circumstances, then, it is only decent courtesy for the returned corpse to uh, break the ice. Tan Solange, qu'est-ce que c'est? Have you no greeting for me? Ah, uh, mon pauvre. Je te remercie, pardon. Forgive me. I, I thought never to see you again. But here I am. Ah, oh, mon cher baby, mon cher baby. Well, now, here is a reunion worth celebrating. That was a pretty rough wound you had, Chris. Worse than it looked. Uh, thank God, it was mostly flesh damage. The doctors tell me the bullet bounced off my sternum and never entered the chest. But should you be on your feet? Long enough to ease your minds about me. I'm still a bit woozy. It was like the time you took the XB2 slant off tackle against Ohio State and that big linebacker Sawchuck kicked you in the head. Something. Something like that. I tell them the good news, El Generissimo. Set my aunt's mind at rest. Well, I know you hold out my motives, even Christophe did. I can hardly blame him since I took such extreme measures to bring him here to Sandorinde before his planned arrival at the Moesia. What was your reason for that? Uh, we walk a tightrope on this shared island of ours. Two cultures, two languages, two forms of government perched precariously on a ever-increasing population in a far more ancient and primitive culture than either of ours. Your brother and I, each in his own way, preserved that delicate balance. With his unexpected death, steps had to be taken. Why? You know his plan was to return the government to the people. Uh, that would not have worked, not even for them. We would have ended both of us in anarchy. Fortunately, my godson was perceptive enough to realize that. We have worked out between us a better plan. A compromise? I would prefer to call it uh, an entente. But tell them, Christophe. It's quite simple. Tomorrow, together, my godfather and I shall proclaim a union between Mauritius and Sandorinde. A trilingual state with one government. Ruled by whom? By the Generalissimo and myself. I, as president... And my godfather as prime minister. Chohido in second place. Ah, uh, we elders grow no younger, Solange. Someone must take our place. I am happy to yield to the future. What better hands could this island be in than in Christophe's? So, now I think, Mr. President, you should rest. Doctors can do only so much. Nature handles the rest. Yes. I would like to... Uh, lie down. I am sure you will be excused. I beg you not to wait for me to enjoy your supper. The President and myself have a few matters to settle about the announcement tomorrow before he goes to sleep. Forgive me. Please. I'm tired. And tomorrow's a big day. Uh, good night. Good night, Chris. Good night. Adieu, mon baby. Goodbye. Forever. What is it? What's the matter with you two? You saw? You know? Do you now believe in zombies? What are you trying to say? That wasn't Chris who was here just now. I don't understand. You don't know him as I do, First, he, he never would accept this deal. The guy is too decent to want us to be part of it. But there are other things. What? Well, first off, our school never played Ohio State. Second, Sawchuck was no linebacker, but a running back who murdered us on the only loss we had together. Third, XB2 wasn't a run play, but a deep pass play that had nothing to do with Chris except as a decoy. I don't understand the things your husband says. But I tell you, that was not Christophe Leclerc who just left. Not my nephew. They have stolen his soul, and that I cannot allow. Well, what can we do about it, Tante Solange? It is a very few minutes to twelve. I told you Hernando Trujedo would be dead by then. Remember? Yes. 
Here is a conjure doll which will make his death. I place it on his desk so he can see it. For it is by his own guilt he must die before the end of this day. But if he doesn't return... He will return. It is written in the dust. Oh, nobody feels like eating. Hmm? Words. I don't suppose I can altogether blame you. Shall I have you shown to your quarters for the night instead? Where is Christoph? Oh, I should never really have allowed him to overtax himself after being wounded. He was absolutely exhausted. I saw him to bed. And you return to suggest the same to us? I think we are all tired. Whatever discussion there may be between us can wait for tomorrow. For you, there is no tomorrow. What do you mean? Liar, cheat, thief, murderer. Look on your desk. Uh, a conjure doll. Your image. Made piece by piece from your belongings. Fashioned in your likeness. Christened in your name with the blood of the black pullet. Your own bracelet of the sacred serpent driven through its brain. Oh, now, do, do, do you think I could buy such childish superstition? I am no savage. What a man thinks is what he is. This primitive mumbo-jumbo will have no effect on me. Are you sure? How large is a bag of guilt you carry? Will nothing convince you, woman? Your nephew... And My I... nephew! Christoph! Christoph is dead! How can you say that? You have just seen him! I saw a walking corpse! No idiot superstition! Like my conjured doll? Of course! You don't believe in it? No! And you believe in zombies? You know the power of voodoo can create them? You know the power of voodoo can kill... What is it you want? Too late for that. I will give you anything. I offer you and these two safe transport now. No strings attached. How can you guarantee it? I am head generalissimo. My power is infinite. Not anymore. The clock is ticking your life away. No. Twelve o'clock. No. Only a few seconds left. Help me. Help me. I cannot help. The die is cast. No. You cannot even help yourself. I will give you money, jewels, anything. Name it. What, what do you want? What you cannot give me. What you stole from my nephew. His soul. I want yours in return. And die. By the power granted me as an obia woman. Vested in my hands by the uncoiling sacred serpent. To take the place of the voodoo doll. As it should to all tyrants. So comes a violent death to you. I condemn you to everlasting fire and death. By the serpent arriving in your No, face. no. I cannot die. I am the dictator. I am supreme. I am the law. No one can touch me, do you hear? No one. <laughs> you condemn me. Why, all I have to do is raise this pistol. And you... What happened? I wouldn't like to guess. Does it matter? He's dead. Are you sure? Well, he's dead all right. Now what? got to get away. Escape somehow. Yeah, only how do we get through the palace guard? At least I have his gun. We'd better try and make a run for it. We have to rescue my nephew first. But Tante Solange, he's our enemy now. I still must rescue him. Me pardon, I'll hear the release him all. What you see me on the gun? Guard! Guard! That's for Bill Hawkins. Pat, Tante, run for it. I'll try to hold him off. You can't kill dead men with that Garcia, yes, but not a zombie. Hand me that salt cellar. Here, but what good... Salt is the only thing that will kill a zombie. It's Chris. Lying 
lying on the bed. Is he... No. No, he's still breathing. He's just asleep. Leave me alone with him. Go if you want to. But leave me with Christoph. Will you be long? As long as it must take. Go. Well, we can't find our way out of here without you. We'll wait. Oh, great serpent who coils about the sky and holds our world together. Help me now. Help me to break the black magic that chains my baby to a living death. Help me to bring his soul home to you. Christoph. Christoph. Listen to me. It is Tanta Solange who speaks. You know me as an opia magician. My magic is greater than the magic of the Hugan who made you what you are. He summoned you from the grave and stole away your soul. Now I must summon you back to the grave. Back to the dead. The everlasting dead. So that your immortal soul may live. But only you can break the bonds. Rise, zombie. Rise. And cross to the window. Open the shutters. Now. Now. Open your eyes. And look at the sea. No! No! In the name of the great serpent, I command you, open your eyes. (sighs) Dante! Dante! I'm going His body may be dead, but his soul is safe. Christoph is home at last. The death of the dictator set a people free in a mad orgy of festival and delight. In the wild celebration that lit up the city, no one had time to pay any attention to the three somber people who found their way back to the hotel. For Pat, Steve, and Tante Solange, there was sadness. But solace, too. The king was dead, but so was the zombie who might have held him prisoner for eternity. I'll return shortly. Hi, Ms. Goldilocks here. Professionally, taste-testing diet drinks can be very difficult, but I've just had to bear with it. Then I found sugar-free Diet 7-Up. It doesn't taste like other diet drinks. It's fresh, light, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up tastes so good that I've taste-tested it hundreds of times, and each time I've given it my seal of approval. Yes, this one's just right. United Airlines steward Jack Nestor talks about friendship service to California. Our 747 to LA, we have a movie. We have a stereo and a choice of three different hot meals plus a, a deli plate. United's Californians. Another reason more people choose the friendly skies than any other airline in the land. You know, we have people that come up to us and say, uh, I like to play bridge, do you know, if anyone else is interested, so we'll make an announcement and get a group together. People who like to play chess. It seems like on a six-hour flight, you can do a lot more for people. You know, you get off feeling like you've, you've done something. Come along, sing the song, people United has seven daily non-stops to California, including wide-body jets to Los Angeles and San Francisco every business day. 
This is Patricia McCann, and we'd like to tell you what the McCann program is all about this coming week. Monday, Dora McCann gives some good ideas on how to prepare the best food buys of the week. Tuesday, we begin a two-part series on nutrition against arthritis, diabetes, heart disease. Our guest, Nathan Pritikin, will discuss research that shows diet can prevent and sometimes reverse some of these degenerative diseases so common in this country. Thursday, Dora McCann interviews Bob Reinhart and Dick Woods on how to prepare elegant meals in very cramped quarters. And Friday, the program will be in praise of mothers and housewives when Ariana Stasinopoulos, author of The Female Woman, gives her argument against the women's liberation movement. Power of suggestion, hypnosis, superstitious fear, Overpowering guilt complexes? Terror of the unknown? Do any or all of these explain the events of the tale I've just told? Or are there really such terrifying things as a walking corpse? Are there really zombies? Well, let's hope you and I never have to find out. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Suzanne Grossman, Vinette Carroll, Bob Caliban, Jackson Beck, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by New Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... WR Mystery Theater has been brought to you by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. And by Suburban Savings, with offices throughout North Jersey. The preceding Mystery Theater program is furnished by the CBS Radio Network. Thank you, Bruce Elliott. Good afternoon. It's time now for the latest news in brief from the WOR Newsroom. President Nixon today rested at his mountain retreat in Camp David, Maryland, as the House Judiciary Committee prepared for the start of impeachment hearings. That panel is expected to begin assembling information on Tuesday in its quest to determine whether to bring charges against the chief executive. A survey by the Gallup organization says that the White House apparently gained little or nothing in the way of public support by releasing transcripts of Watergate or tape recordings. The Gallup poll says 700 persons were questioned after that release. And the finding was that 17% had a higher opinion of Mr. Nixon because the transcripts were made public, but 42% said they had a lower opinion of him. A prominent Democratic senator... Henry Jackson of Washington hammers away at the Nixon administration's economic policies. That story from WOR's Bob Brady. Senator Jackson put his own label on the economic policies of the Nixon administration. He called it elephant economics. Jackson, a potential candidate for the Democratic nomination for president, says there's no better symbol to represent the slow and sluggish economic state of the nation. Everything that is going up should be going down. Everything that's going down should be going up. We have our interest rates at the highest rate in history, with no end in sight, and with the only remedy for all of this is to put the economy of the United States into a major recession that will hurt everyone. Jackson says the working man has taken the economic beating because the Nixon administration has been made ineffective by the loss of confidence in government as a result of the Watergate crisis. For WOR News, Bob Brady reporting from the Hotel Commodore. The senator is in Manhattan to speak before a meeting of the League for Industrial Democracy. If computer projections are accurate, France will soon have her first non-Gaullist president in 16 years. The computers say that uh, the communist-supported socialist candidate in today's presidential elections will come up with the most votes, but not enough to win outright. 
The projects, uh, projections, that is, say that Francois Mitterrand will get about 44% of today's ballots. A conservative candidate is projected to run second with 33%. And the Gaullist hopeful is running a poor third. On the basis of these projections, Mitterrand and uh, con- this conservative will face each other in a runoff two weeks from now. Top diplomatic officials of the United States and Russia were at work in the Middle East today. State Secretary Kissinger flew from Jerusalem to Jordan's capital city of Amman. There he is briefing King Hussein on details of recent negotiations for disengagement of Israeli and Syrian troops in the Golan Heights. A high-ranking official in Kissinger's party says that so far uh, talks uh, they have managed to scale down the level of violence along the truce line. Checking sports, Milwaukee has defeated Boston 97-89 to to tie that NBA championship playoff series at two games apiece. And the Stanley Cup semifinal decider at Philadelphia, the New York Rangers are tied with the Flyers, one all after one period. In baseball, the Mets blew a four-run lead and fell before San Diego in the first of two at Shea, 5-4. to four. In the second game, the Mets lead the Padres 2 to nothing in the fifth inning. In Kansas City, the Yankees trail the Royals in the eighth inning, 4-2. to two. And we'll have the latest weather after this. Someday you'll own, someday you'll own, sooner or later you'll own generals. With so many new kinds of tires coming out and so many claims being made about tires, maybe you're pu- puzzled about making the right choice. There's a solution. It's your general tire specialist. He's trained to handle all your tire needs and automotive service problems, too. So if you need new tires, he'll be glad to spend a few minutes explaining which general tire is the best for you, your driving, and your budget. Your general tire specialist is just one reason why, sooner or later, you'll loan generals. Look him up in the yellow pages today. Sooner or later, you'll own generals. Sooner or later, you'll own generals. Here's the latest forecast for New York City and vicinity. Cloudy and cool tonight, with rain likely developing towards morning. The low tonight in the mid-40s. Tomorrow will bring periods of rain into tomorrow night. The high in the mid-50s tomorrow. The low tomorrow night in the mid-40s. Under cloudy skies in mid-Manhattan, the temperature 52 degrees, humidity 38%, barometric pressure 30.02 inches and falling. The winds are out of the south at 9 miles per hour. That's the latest news. I'm Bert Wilson. This is WOR New York.